We're on Yosemite Creek below Lower Yosemite Falls. It's a cold early April morning and we're watching the frazzle ice formation. Frazzle ice are these small crystals of frozen mist that forms in Upper Yosemite Falls and Lower Yosemite Falls. The particles of ice wash down the stream with the liquid water in a slurry, a slushy, slurpy, goopy mass that uh, in many cases flows like lava. So if you can imagine in your mind a giant slurpy machine that is putting out millions of gallons of slurpy into Yosemite Creek, it, it's amazing. It's not snow, it's not ice, it's something in the middle and, and to watch it move underneath a Yosemite Creek bridge is pretty incredible. This is one of the more unique phenomena that you'll see in Yosemite if you're lucky enough to be here in March and April, which is the prime season for this. But it's an amazing thing to watch something this dynamic in Yosemite Creek. You see something that the millions of visitors who come in the summertime never imagined something like this. It behaves a little bit like cement in some ways, that it stops and it forms kind of a stationary piece and then the flowing pieces go past that stationary piece. The ice will surge into place and with enough uh, thickness it stops and the creek will flow a different direction. The water will drain out of where it's just deposited it leaving this what looks like snow but again it's soft it's unconsolidated you would plunge right into that now we see this dynamic change as the the frazzle ice has built up its own levee and uh, caused the channel to clog up and it's coming toward us we're going to have to uh, be ready to move here uh, as the yosemite creek and uh, all of its uh, might is coming toward us but you'll see this lava flow effect where the ice is going to accumulate and build up blockages that stop it from coming in a certain direction. It's the full force of Yosemite Creek, which can be up to, uh, say, 100 cubic feet per second. When that is moving along in a place where we don't expect it, where our engineering of building roads and trails and bridges uh, hasn't anticipated, the, the full flow of Yosemite Creek has caused problems with uh, damage to buildings on the side of the creek and our footbridges. Uh, at least one has been destroyed. One other was displaced by frazzle ice, picking it up off of its footings and uh, others have been inundated by the frazzle ice deposits at times. So a lot of people that are in the park in March and April will be walking along the trail near Yosemite Creek and see piles of what appears to be snow. If they took a little more time to observe, they would notice the snow is very selectively deposited only in the stream channels here. There's none up in the woods off to the side. It's the first thing people think of. Of course, it looks like snow, so what else could it be? Here's where frazzle ice becomes quite dangerous because you can't tell how thick it is or how solid it is or how much water is underneath. If you were to walk out into this, you might make it a few steps and you might plunge through um, over your head into icy moving water underneath this frazzle ice deposit on top. Every winter at the base of Upper Yosemite Fall, a big conical mound of ice and snow develops. We call it the ice cone or the snow cone, and it can grow to be hundreds of feet tall. The snow cone builds up from falling water that freezes while it's falling. It freezes in a couple of places. Some freezes at the bottom. Some of it freezes on the rock on either side of Upper Yosemite Falls. When the sun comes around during the late part of the morning, it starts to loosen that ice and it falls and builds up uh, onto the snow cone too. And you can hear them throughout the valley. It's pretty amazing how loud those ice sheets can be when they come crashing down. There is a persistent myth that directly connects the snow cone's disappearance to the apparition of our frazzle ice deposits. There's not a direct connection. This is not the snow cone we see lying on the floor of Yosemite Valley washed out. The snow cone gradually melts away as temperature warms up. 
As temperature warms up, the volume in Yosemite Creek increases, but these sub-freezing nights will turn some portion of Yosemite Falls to ice that flows in the liquid water, and the frazzle ice, as we call it, is only indirectly connected to the snow cone. I have heard people refer to frazzle ice as the snow cone breaking up, but um, if that were the case, then these other places where it exists in Yosemite Valley, that wouldn't be true. I've also observed it at Royal Arches Cascade, and I do know that it happens at Ribbon Creek, also over at Bridalvale Falls and Sentinel Creek. This is a marker for many of us in Yosemite Valley when the frazzle ice flows. It means that uh, springtime is here where the snow melt is increasing, but we still have the sub-freezing temperatures at night. So yeah, it is very much a marker of the season. You won't see this in June. You won't see this in uh, October. You'll only see it in March and usually in April. Well, Yosemite gets close to 4 million visitors a year. And the vast majority of those visitors come in June, July, and August. So they're here in the summer months. And I think that a lot of people are missing some of the magical events that happen in the wintertime. For example, Horsetail Falls. It looks like a glowing firefall in February. And the snow cone at the base of Upper Yosemite Fall. You're just not going to see that in June, July, and August. And the fact that frazzle ice is flowing a lot of times in the spring, it's pretty incredible. So I think that Yosemite in late winter and early spring holds a lot of very special and unique natural phenomenon that more people would probably come here in winter if they just knew that they could experience these things.